mobile video game truck. Not to mention all the games, prizes, crafts, character meet and greets, jumpy houses, and more. Parents and grandparents can find out more details at whbc.com. Canton Kid Fest, Saturday, February 15th at the Canton Civic Center. See you there. The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Studio Arts and Glass, Mercy Medical Center, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our very special guest this morning, Dr. Michael Linz, Chief of Inpatient Medicine at Mercy Medical Center. Good morning, Dr. Linz, and welcome to the show. Good morning, Paul and Brad. Thank you very much for inviting me onto your program this morning. Hospital stays can be full of surprises. One might be the, the, the doctor who shows up in place of your personal physician. Hospitalist medicine is the fastest growing medical specialty in the United States. Demand for this specialty was initially fueled by managed care efforts to bolster efficiency, cut costs, and improve care. Today, patients admitted to the hospital tend to be more severely ill. Hospital-based doctors can better attend such patients, respond to their problems, and navigate the hospital's increasingly complex systems. Today we're going to talk with Dr. Michael Linz, and we're going to talk about what a hospitalist is and how during a time when an, a patient might feel vulnerable, they are there to manage their care and work with their personal physician. We'd like to remind our listeners today that our program is also available on our podcast. You can just look <coughs> for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in your favorite podcast app and listen to any of our programs anytime. You can also post up questions on our live Facebook feed today. Okay, doctor, I was warned that you have a pop quiz for today um we didn't weren't able to study because we didn't know the subject so here we go well part of the pop quiz is to get an idea of what the subject matter is so uh, the question is what is a hospitalist and the the possible answers are a a groupie of the tv show house who's obsessed with the smell of hospitals <laughs> and hangs out in the waiting room all day <laughs> talking with the ladies at the information desk drinking day-old coffee and eating packages of stale graham crackers. <laughs> Answer B is the real avocation of Bill Murray and Groundhog Day, waking up every morning in perpetual training in the residency program, being on call 24 seven, no patient cap and no duty restriction hours. <laughs> Your third choice is not actually a physician at all, but an undercover administrator hired by the hospitalist to control utilization management, kind of like undercover boss, that infiltrates the medical staff and reports all rumors back to the CEO. And I'm, not, the, I'm not sure there's an answer there, is there? <laughs> and there the, the last potential answer is the main cog in the fastest growing specialty in American medical history, boasting more than 50,000 physicians in a mere 20 plus years, transforming itself not only into an indispensable part of the hospital's patient care and management team, but the key driver in future health systems delivery and payment reform. Wow. Well, since there's no sitcom option, I'm going to go with that option. Yeah, that's got to work. And indeed, that is the... That is the right answer. How long has this hospitalist concept, it just sort of seems to me like it's just become on the scene. Interestingly, this is a concept that started uh, in California in the early 1990s. It was first uh, brought into play by the uh, Scripps Clinic uh, in uh, La Jolla, but it really first became its own entity in uh, uh, 1996, where Paul Wachter, who is known as the uh, father of hospitalist medicine, coined the term hospitalist in a New England Journal article in 1996. So it actually started in earnest at the University of San Francisco, California. Okay. And so it's only been around for 20 plus years. Okay. I skipped this question, Doctor. Um, our listeners would love to know a little bit about yourself and, and, and your career and that sort of thing. Sure. Well, I'm uh, born and raised in Canton, a native son, uh, went to Glen Oak High School, uh, did my undergrad and uh, medical school at the Northeastern Ohio University's College of Medicine in Rootstown, now known as Neomed. Uh, did my undergrad at Kent State as part of that. Uh, I did my residency in internal medicine at Mercy and Altman. Uh, and uh, for 25 years, I was in private practice. And then for about the last eight years, I moved back into the hospital at uh, Mercy and uh, did a number of things administratively and teaching and uh, some hospitals medicine and then was tapped to uh, 
become the uh, chief of medicine in 2016. Okay. So, so you, you're really kind of a, gosh, you're kind of like a manager of the staff, what would we say? Well, we have um, uh, uh, over 20 full-time and part-time hospitalists that uh, are under my guise, as well as uh, uh, locums physicians and uh, part-time folks that work. So we probably have a staff between physicians and nurse practitioners of uh, somewhere in the mid-40s to upper 40s as far as number of uh, providers. The numbers that you just said uh, of hospitalists now, um, I, I'm sure that both hospitals in Canton, Ohio are, have hospitalists, um, you know, someone in charge like yourself. But yes. What about smaller hospitals? And, uh, is that something they can do or is it a little bit too cumbersome? Uh, hospitalist programs can be anywhere from, you know, 30 or 40 docs up to three, four or five physicians. Uh, a union hospital in Dover which is a relatively small hospital and an access sure. hospital has a hospitals program. Uh, they have programs out in Coshocton and in some of the critical access hospitals, uh, much smaller in, in size uh, and sometimes maybe just one hospital is working as an admissions position for the day, but uh, it can be anywhere from, from one to a hundred. Is, is it safe to, to say that, that all um, practitioners outside of the hospital are, com are comfortable with the I'm not sure if the word is comfortable. Uh, it uh, it it almost is uh, the the changes in healthcare and uh, how hospital medicine works, in a way, almost uh, uh, mandates that uh, uh, that you stratify what you do, whether working predominantly on an inpatient basis or working on an outpatient basis. Uh, last uh, I looked, approximately uh, seventy percent of all hospitalized patients are cared for by hospitalists in the United States. And in, on our medical staff, we probably have less than 20 primary care physicians, that's internal medicine and family medicine, that actually still come to the hospital, see their patients, and then also have an outpatient practice. Well, is it safe to say that um, uh, medicine is more efficient with the hospitalist, or, or is there cost savings, or what are the pluses? Well, that's the premise, the premise. Uh, it, it, it's easier said than done. Uh, the advantages to the uh, hospitalist model is you have physicians that are hospital-based 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you have uh, immediate access to, to care at the bedside. Uh, you have uh, efficiencies in uh, moving through testing, procedures, working with consultants. Uh, you have uh, protocols that are in place for uh, uh, managing length of stay and uh, efficiencies of transfers of care. And so you have s somebody who is there basically at all hours of the day. Uh, and uh, uh, we really work as an extension of the primary care physician as far as, you know, communication and uh, 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 interaction with them as well. In, in the past, okay, when we didn't have hospitalists, <coughs> excuse me, it, it was unusual to have, have doctors in the hospital at night, right? Uh, yeah, other than the medical residents, the, the, the physicians in training, uh, or sometimes they would have what's called a house doctor, which would be somebody who would be uh, hired in just to work at night, but nothing organized, no. I see. So now what we've got going with hospitals is there's always physicians there in all categories. Would that be correct? Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's trending that way. Uh, Mercy not only has a hospitalist program, which is uh, you know, medicine and whatnot, they also have an uh, OBGYN uh, uh, hospitalist program as well, so OB hospitalists. Uh, that, uh, again, uh, are there 24-7 and help uh, uh, with the uh, deliveries and whatnot. Um, there are uh, hospitalists in pediatrics, uh, neurology, uh, and uh, also in the uh, transition post-transitional care in the nursing facilities as well. So it's really a, a continuum of care that's uh, being developed and integrated. So let's say um, I'm in the hospital. I want to see my own doctor. I don't want you taking care of me. What happens? <laughs> well, that, that's a good question. Um, y normally, the, uh, the physician, uh, your, your primary care physician, uh, notifies their, their patient, uh, uh, patient population that they, they don't go to the hospital regularly and that they're being cared for by hospitalists. Sure. So, so we have a, 
a uh, uh, a re uh, understood relationship with uh, which physicians that uh, we take care of their patients or not. And so I've really never had anybody uh, uh, say, I don't want you to take care of me. Yeah. Um, uh, I've had uh, instances where, uh, you know, we'll get the, the primary care physician maybe on the phone and we have a three-way conversation. But uh, generally, it's uh, it's been a smooth process. And I think uh, the, uh, the, uh, the population understands uh, the uh, changes in, in sure. healthcare and how medicine works now. Well, I originally heard this some time ago that this uh, customer wrote for some, uh, some other doctor took care of me. My regular doctor took take care of me. This was a while back, and then. Well, and that's still a, that's still a, a very personal uh, 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 feeling. You know, you have a very strong relationship with your primary care physician, and uh, it is very hard to replicate that uh, over a period of three days or sometimes twenty four hours. Sure. How do we become a hospitalist? I mean, is that special training or? It's moving in that direction. Um, the majority of the hospitalists, uh, probably 90% of hospitalists are graduates of an internal medicine residency program, uh, which is a hospital-based program. Uh, so you, you have to have a residency uh, graduate uh, training uh, just like you would uh, in, any, in uh, uh, any other primary care specialty. Uh, there's a growing number of programs that are actually having different tracks uh, where uh, you can go into the training program and, and move as an inpatient track, mm -hmm. really moving as a hospitalist, or an outpatient track where you're going to work in the outpatient setting. Uh, family medicine, which uh, traditionally has always been an outpatient practice, uh, now also has an inpatient track as well, and I have uh, uh, two of my physicians are family medicine grads who uh, did an intensive inpatient program. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it is definitely stratifying to its own uh, it, it, it's, its own drummer. And I think eventually there'll be uh, specifically categorized programs in hospitalist medicine as more of the teaching programs are, are overseen by academic hospitalists. Okay. okay, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't, our commitment to your health. Stop by your local Medicine Center Pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Is CBD oil right for you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answers don't come from a convenience food store or a mall kiosk. Your medicine center pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. Our pharmacists have been trained to provide expert CBD oil information to tailor therapies like CBD capsules, tinctures, lotions, and ointments to your particular need. We have the highest quality, organic, Colorado-grown, non-GMO, full-spectrum CBD oil products. Visit the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia. 
Men like Paul White love Studio Arts and Glass. Why? We wrap all of his gifts. Gifts like hand-blown paper whites, ornaments, jewelry, and stunning sterling silver and precious stones like amethyst and crystals. After 30 years, Studio Arts and Glass is known for creating and restoring stunning stained glass. Just ask Paul White. Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are talking with Dr. Michael Linz, Chief of Inpatient Medicine at Mercy Medical Center. Have a question, post it on our live Facebook feed. All right. We are learning some fascinating details about a hospitalist and how they take care of us today at Mercy Medical Center. Um, what are the work models for a hospitalist? How often do they work and how long are their shifts? Um, there are various work models for the hospitalist system. The uh, most common uh, or traditional is what's called a seven-on, seven-off uh, model, where a physician will work seven days in a row and then have seven days off. Uh, the shifts are usually 12 hours, uh, seven in the morning till seven in the evening, and then seven in the evening till seven in the morning, depending on what your work shift is. Uh, other models are a Monday through Friday model, where uh, a physician will work Monday through Friday at various times, and then weekends are done uh, uh, on a rotational basis. Uh, the uh, the seven on seven off model has various uh, mutations as well, where people work uh, you know part of a week, uh, especially if they're part time, uh, or they have families at home and they uh, want to work just uh, you know uh, x amount of shifts per month. Uh, there are swing shifts that come in throughout the day, so there's all these machinations off this model, but uh, that's the traditional model that works uh, I think the best. So I guess maybe just for a point of clarification, there really isn't a situation where people are working 24 and 36 hours straight in theory. Is, is that right? Because it seems like a, there was a time when you'd be on call for like 24 hours. Does that happen still? Or um, No, it, it doesn't. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, this was predominantly during residency uh, back, in, back in the day uh, when the House of God was written uh, by uh, Samuel Shem. Uh, those, those, are, those, are, those days are gone. Uh, from a safety standpoint and from an educational standpoint. So residents have uh, uh, duty restriction hours. Uh, they can only work so many uh, hours at a time before they have to have a break. And our physicians don't work any more than, than 12 hours uh, in a shift, which is still uh, a a time pretty intense. Uh, yeah. yeah, you could be running that whole 12 hours. You know, but, you know, the physicians in private practice, uh, you know, and I, I was there for 25 years, the beeper, you know, never goes off, ne never gets turned off. So yeah. you're essentially on all the time, uh, which uh, is an advantage to the hospital's model because it provides an opportunity for better what we call work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So you touched on it before our first commercial break. For, pa uh, for listeners just joining us, can you talk about what type of patients you care for and do hospitalists specialize between pediatric care or adult care or maybe by disease state? Um, sure. Um, our, our hospitalist team uh, cares for uh, all patients that come through the door that have medical issues. So we take care of patients or co-manage with the intensivists in the ICU, with the cardiologists in the CCU, with the cardiovascular surgeons. Uh, we admit uh, all the normal uh, uh, traditional uh, health issues to the hospital, pneumonia, congestive heart failure, um, infections, whatnot, uh, abdominal pain. Uh, we also work on a consultant role for the trauma program. So a patient comes in with uh, trauma, we'll handle their medical issues, or we'll do a consultant work uh, for orthopedic care or rehab care. So uh, we really uh, run the entire spectrum. And again, there are uh, specialized uh, uh, physicians uh, within their same discipline. So in internal medicine, we don't see you know, young children and we don't do any OB. Uh, so uh, the obstetricians have a OB hospitalist, the pediatricians have a pediatric hospitalist, and so it, it's uh, divided based on, uh, on training. Now, Dr. Sabi is head of the, the coronary division. Yes, and, sir. And you have a, um, uh, a cath lab right there in the emergency room. Right. Now, how, do, how does the hospitalist interface with that group? So in that situation, uh, you know, there's a, an emergency chest pain center, laboratory work, uh, the, phys the patient will come in uh, maybe in the middle of a heart attack or uh, something that's on the cusp. They'll go directly to the cath lab in the ER. 
So then we are called after the procedure is done and after the patient's stabilized, uh, we'll admit them to the coronary care unit, we'll handle their hypertension, their diabetes, their cholesterol, and then the uh, cardiologist will manage the, uh, the heart itself. So we work uh, in a co-management uh, uh, arrangement wow. and uh, a, a tag team, essentially. Well, it certainly makes sense to me that, that that's a better scenario than, say, like it used to be years ago where an individual physician was there and sort of took care of some of those things. Yeah, everything is, is pretty, pretty stratified and specialized. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, primary care physicians that come to the hospital still do an excellent, excellent job. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, time is really of the essence uh, for these medical emergencies. And uh, being on site uh, provides us immediate access for, for care. Okay, interesting. Are you an independent contractor or are you employed by Mercy Medical Center? Well, in, in my role as, uh, as a chief of inpatient medicine, uh, I work as an independent contractor. Sound Physicians is an uh, 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 independent entity, and then we are contracted as an uh, independent contractor with Mercy. Uh, in my role uh, doing a, a medical education and uh, management and physician advisory, uh, I'm employed by, by Mercy for those things. Okay. <clears throat> Tell us about Sound Physicians. Well, Sound Physicians is a, a, has, it's a very cool story. Um, uh, it was uh, founded in 2001 by a physician by the name of Rob Bessler, who's from Ohio, uh, grew up in Berea, uh, did his uh, medical education at Case Western and his residency at uh, Cleveland Clinic. Uh, he ended up on the West Coast uh, in Tacoma, Washington, and with uh, nine, uh, eight or nine other guys, uh, started a hospitals program with one hospital in Tacoma with nine doctors in 2001. So uh, fast forward 19 years, and uh, it is now in uh, Sound Physicians is the largest uh, hospital management group in the country. Uh, they're in 42 states, uh, 3,500 providers, over 350 hospitals. And uh, all physician-run, physician-led, physician-managed, which is... Uh, uh, very uh, uh, comforting to myself knowing that I have a physician at the top of the chain uh, who is uh, making decisions based on uh, safety and quality of health care. Hmm. Well, that's inspiring to see someone had that much vision to be able to gather a group of intelligent people and forge ahead and improve patient care. So that's really exciting. Um, we are just about at the bottom of the hour, J.D. I think we should take a break now, huh? You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center hmm. Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. and weather all morning long on your home of local news news talk 1480 whbc ken's morning news whbc am ken reliable as ever on news talk 1480 whbc from the news talk 1480 whbc newsroom it's not in the mail yet your first half star county property tax bill will be mailed out a few weeks later this year around february 12th the new due date is set for March 4th. Remember the world's worst cat, Perdita? Well, they were trying to find a home for her. 175 people actually applied to adopt her. She's going to her forever home on Saturday in Tennessee. Apparently not wanting to be upstaged by Punxsutawney Phil, AccuWeather meteorologists are attempting to beat him to the punch. It's Groundhog Day on Sunday. They're giving their prediction ahead of Sunday's event. Forecasters say in most parts of the country, winter will continue for another six weeks. That means that Phil should see his shadow when he emerges from his hole on Sunday. 
The think tank Workforce Institute, which has been crunching the numbers regarding the day after Super Bowl absenteeism phenomenon since 2005, estimates that more than 17 million workers will not be at their places of employment come Monday morning. More news coming up at 10 o'clock. I'm Pam Cook. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Is CBD oil right for you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answers don't come from a convenience food store or a mall kiosk. Your medicine center pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. Our pharmacists have been trained to provide expert CBD oil information to tailor therapies like CBD capsules, tinctures, lotions, and ointments to your particular need. We have the highest quality, organic, Colorado-grown, non-GMO, full-spectrum CBD oil products. Visit the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia. We've extended our most recent sale at the Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville and have added a lot of new items. All lift chairs are reduced to $199 with many in stock. All seasonal merchandise is drastically reduced, as well as a wide selection of health and beauty products, cough, cold, and vitamins, and shop our tool aisle and toy aisles to find more bargains. Take time to shop our store and you'll find many, many values. The Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Your severe weather station. News Talk 1480 WHBC. Here's your AccuWeather forecast. Cloudy skies today. A few flurries around by this afternoon. The high today, 37. Cloudy tonight and a low at 28. Rain or snow shower tomorrow afternoon, high 38. And then a rain or snow shower in spots tomorrow evening. Otherwise cloudy, low 32. Cloudy breezy and mild on Sunday, the high near 48. Sun followed by increasing cloudiness on Monday, the high 54. I'm Steve Williams for News Talk 1480 WHBC. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today, Brad and I are learning about the role of hospitals. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. So we may have covered a little bit of this, doctor, but what are the advantages of the hospital's model of care? Well, there are uh, a number of advantages. One is the, uh, uh, the data is pretty strong at that it reduces the, the cost of care. Uh, predominantly by uh, being able to reduce length of stay, uh, improve efficiencies, uh, have testing done in a timely manner, getting results back, uh, uh, co-managing with the consultants, discussing with them, working at the bedside with the patient and families, uh, working with the uh, uh, case management department and moving people through in a timely manner, uh, not rushing people through their hospital stay, but working efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, uh, important thing is even though it decreases the, the length of stay, it, it does not affect, we, we never allow patient safety and quality of care to, to be superseded by time. So uh, that's very important. Uh, the other advantage uh, is uh, uh, quality of care and patient satisfaction scores are, are uh, higher in the hospitalist medicine model. Uh, again, because you're there, uh, you know, you can go back and see the patient two or three times a day, meet with the family, you know, discuss things, uh, meet with a consultant. So it's the ability to have one-on-one -on -one open communication that is really, really a key. Uh, so, uh, and, it, and uh, our model allows us time at the bedside. 
rather than having us have to go in with a computer and uh, have our head buried in, uh, in a laptop, uh, we actually sit down at the bedside and uh, talk to the patients and uh, comfort them and actually uh, provide them the time that, uh, that, they, uh, that they require. Um, also, I call it the practice makes perfect model. You know, because this is what we do all day, every day, we become very efficient in patients with, uh, you know, very complicated illnesses, very acute healthcare issues, and uh, what we call comorbid conditions. Uh, uh, folks are living a lot longer, and they're living with chronic disease processes, uh, emphysema, congestive heart failure, diabetes, circulatory problems, and so you have patients that have uh, 10 or 12 different health issues, and we are basically the quarterback or the manager of that uh, uh, patient as far as bringing in consultants and uh, coordination of care. Um, the other uh, advantage to uh, the, the program, I think we had talked about this earlier, is what we call work-life balance. Um, it's, a, it's bantered about a lot, but uh, is, is a real entity. Uh, ph physicians, uh, young physicians coming out of training uh, like the idea of uh, time working, time not working, uh, ability to have time with the family, uh, to uh, do other things. Uh, sometimes uh, physicians uh, who may want to go on to further specialty training will take what's called a gap year or two, uh, work uh, uh, as a hospitalist, uh, either to uh, uh, solidify what they want to do long term, uh, work on research projects on the weeks they're off, uh, or uh, pay off debt. And so uh, a lot of advantages that way. Uh, so uh, it, uh, it, it, it uh, theoretically it works that way. And it's not always as smooth as we would like it to be, but uh, it's moving definitely in that direction. Seem, it would seem like there's no disadvantages, but there have to be some disadvantages, right? Oh, definitely disadvantages. Uh, you know, the, the main disadvantage, in my opinion, is that uh, the model itself kind of uh, 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 purposely creates a discontinuity of care. Again, not having your primary care physician take care of you, who you've maybe gone to for 20 years and they know you uh, like the back of your hand. Uh, and so uh, uh, you're meeting somebody who you don't know. Uh, who's going to take care of you and have to figure out everything in a matter of days. If they're in for an observation, a matter of hours. Uh, you know, we have uh, physicians that come and work a couple of days here, a couple of days there. So there's maybe one physician that you have Monday, Tuesday, and then maybe another physician Wednesday, Thursday. So, you know, there's some uh, a disconnect there as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there definitely is not an optimal model for communicating with the primary care physician and uh, having their input as well. Uh, so these are, are you know, definite uh, you know, disadvantages to, to the model itself. Is technology getting better as far as the EMR and the electronic transmission of lab tests and imaging? And It's got to be a little better than it was, but it's probably still not perfect, isn't it? Uh, far from perfect. Uh, if, if you look at uh, the causes of physician burnout, which is a, a, a big buzzword now in, in our literature, um, having to uh, work uh, with an uh, electronic health record uh, contributes to uh, 30 to 35 percent of the uh, uh, symptoms of, uh, of burnout, just having to do all these clicks and work through all these projects as well. Uh, but that being said, the EMR as system... As opposed to pulling out the paper record, hanging on the end of the bed. Right exactly. Right. Or, or dictating into a dictaphone or yeah, whatever. Okay. You, know, um, <coughs> you know, back in the day, you know, I, I knew every patient like the back of my hand. Uh, even if I couldn't remember their name, if I ran into them in the mall, I could tell you what their diagnosis was, you know, <laughs> what their medications were, uh, uh, when their daughter got married. Uh, and wow. so, uh, you know, th th those, those things are not there anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, one of the advantages uh, with our new potential uh, 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 acquisition by the Cleveland Clinic is to bring in cutting edge uh, uh, electronic health record and uh, and ways of communication. Uh, definitely the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Things are done in real time. Uh, when we have a, a patient uh, discharged home, uh, we uh, dictate into or, or we template into a dragon system and so it immediately is faxed to the physician or emailed to the physician so they get uh, uh, hmm. information immediately. We have a patient portal where the patients can go up and look at their own medical records laboratory work, they can look at their admission history and physical and discharge summary. And so it, it provides definitely better access to uh, patients having direct information. Hmm. Uh, Very interesting. Well, it's really, really different. Thank you. I think we can skip this next question. Yeah. Um, 
you answered a lot of questions I had about trying to communicate with the primary care and frankly even the pharmacy. Sometimes it's a challenge. Um, you know, what what can you do to help? Um, what do you do to help communicate when a patient leaves the farm or leaves the hospital? You know how it is. It's Friday night. They want to go home, and if they can go home, you want to get them home. And um, maybe there's a contraindication between what they've had in the past, or maybe there's just been a change in medication therapy. And how can we communicate that effectively? You already mentioned how you communicate to the primary care. Um, what usually happens when the patient goes home and needs extra care from the pharmacy? Um, that's a challenge, and, and probably uh, one of the uh, areas uh, that uh, uh, tends to be a concern at the time of discharge. Uh, especially a patient who comes in and maybe has a, a significant changes in their in their medications. Uh, they come in for congestive heart failure, for example, and uh, their uh, blood pressure medications change, their water pill has changed, uh, their uh, 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 medication to uh, thin their blood has changed, and so uh, those are uh, uh, difficult to communicate. Uh, we, in, in our electronic health record, we have a, uh, a medication reconciliation list or, or a MAR, uh, that MAR is, uh, uh, again, as part of the discharge summary, sent uh, directly to the physician. Uh, if there are uh, wholesale changes, uh, you know, we have uh, ancillary staff that help us uh, uh, communicate those changes. Uh, case management, uh, the, the nurse uh, discharge planner. Uh, my group has two what are called CPNs, clinical performance nurses, that will get on the phone uh, and uh, work with uh, the, uh, the patient. Uh, if there are changes that uh, are uh, uh, insurance-related questions, uh, you know, large co-pays, uh, whatnot, uh, obviously you've, you've heard from us many times or from the case manager, uh, making sure that those medications are covered uh, or that uh, they get a starter kit from the hospital. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, uh, definitely far from perfect, but uh, we do try to communicate. If it's really significant, the physician will get on the phone and talk to the primary, just, you know, call yeah. them on the phone. Uh, there's there's nothing that supplants direct doctor to doctor communication. Well, and I know nothing is done with without the best intent. But like you mentioned, sometimes just the insurance plans formularies can be difficult to navigate, and you you just sometimes we have to work together to make it work, and that was that's the goal. So. Absolutely, you know, it, it's about uh, patient care and patient safety. Definitely. What's the most rewarding part of your job? Um. There's a, a lot of things that are rewarding. Uh, probably the most uh, rewarding thing is an opportunity to uh, uh, influence healthcare on a on a on a more global level. Um, during my time in private practice, uh, I, I loved the patients I took care of, and uh, was able to uh, impact them, uh, you know, uh, patient by patient. Uh, this is kind of a more uh, broad-based look. And uh, you know, my goal is to uh, improve the quality of health care, not only at Mercy, but at, in, in my hometown. And so uh, while I, I, I don't have the, the direct uh, relationships that I had before, uh, I feel that I'm doing things on a broader base that hopefully can influence the quality of health care in our community. The other thing that I enjoy is I love to teach. Uh, my uh, parents were both educators uh, uh, as I was growing up in the Kansas City school system. And uh, the uh, love of uh, uh, being a lifelong learner and educating the, the uh, young physicians and nurses and medical students and the recent grads that come into uh, our group as hospitalists uh, provides me probably the, the most uh, enjoyment uh, along the line. So uh, being able to teach is great. And then finally, this is a new skill set that uh, I've had to learn to develop by uh, you know, going to educational seminars, doing a lot of reading and uh, learning on the job. Uh, in medical school, they don't teach you how to be a manager uh, <laughs> or an administrator. Yeah. And so uh, it's a uh, trial by fire. I don't teach you that in pharmacy school either. So. I'm sure. <laughs> Growing up with a family of teachers, okay, were you constantly quizzed or? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. You know, my, 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 my parents, uh, all, my, my, my parents always uh, um, uh, what to t touted the, uh, the importance of education. My father was a, uh, elementary school principal at Lathrop and Clarendon for uh, 35 years. My mother was a prescriptive reading teacher, okay. also in the Kansas City school system. So the importance of education was just inherent in our family. But yeah. all of the all of my, my brothers and sisters, as well as my own children, uh, were uh, self-motivated. That's good. Very good. Before we take our last commercial break, you touched on the Cleveland Clinic. 
do you care to just make a comment about that uh, with regard to um, what the community might be interested in, given the buzz? Sure. Uh, the um, the Cleveland Clinic uh, and Mercy have uh, 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 tentatively uh, put together an agreement where the uh, clinic is going to acquire Mercy as a, one of their uh, hospitals within the system. Uh, there's been a due diligence process going on for the last number of months. And that has been going very favorably. There have been no major roadblocks uh, that uh, have uh, transpired. Um, the Cleveland Clinic uh, is uh, obviously a very impressive entity and uh, you know, one, of the, one of the largest uh, systems in Ohio. Uh, interestingly, uh, uh, they are all physician-led. Uh, and so the, uh, the, the clinic in their uh, higher level uh, 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 areas are all run by physicians. And so uh, that is very uh, uh, comforting. Uh, the one thing that a lot of people have asked is, well, the Cleveland Clinic is a, is a secular hospital system. How does that work with, uh, with Mercy being a, a faith-based system? And uh, one of the uh, major uh, areas that uh, had to be uh, agreed upon is that Mercy would continue to be a faith-based Catholic hospital. Uh, they would still continue to provide care for the uh, underprivileged and underinsured and uninsured. Uh, they would still have their, their charity health care available. Uh, and they would still continue to have the mission with the, the uh, um, Sister to Charity Foundation in Canton and also uh, the uh, Mercy Foundation. So all those things are intact. Interestingly, because um, uh, uh, the Cleveland Clinic is not, as a basis, a faith-based system, the, uh, the okay to move forward had to actually go to the Vatican, and the, uh, the Pope had to give the, uh, the sign-off on that. So That's fabulous. That's amazing. Okay, Thanks. final break here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Men like Paul White love studio arts and glass. Why? We wrap all of his gifts. Gifts like hand-blown paper whites, ornaments, jewelry, and stunning sterling silver and precious stones like amethyst and crystals. After 30 years, Studio Arts and Glass is known for creating and restoring stunning stained glass. Just ask Paul White. Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. We've extended our most recent sale at the Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville and have added a lot of new items. All lift chairs are reduced to $199 with many in stock. All seasonal merchandise is drastically reduced, as well as a wide selection of health and beauty products, cough, cold, and vitamins. And shop our tool aisle and toy aisles to find more bargains. Take time to shop our store and you'll find many, many values. The Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville, next to the Medicine Center Pharmacy. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Hi, Paul White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. From 1976 to the new year, 2020, we've been part of the Canton community. This year, we celebrate 44 years of service. Thank you for your business and continued support of the Medicine Center Pharmacies. A lot has changed in the pharmacy world over the past 44 years, but one thing hasn't our commitment to your health. Stop by your local medicine center pharmacy in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, or New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're talking with Dr. Michael Linz from Mercy Hospital. 
So, um, Dr. Linz, help our listeners understand uh, why this is beneficial for them if, if they're hospitalized. You know, there's a lot of people, as we've talked all throughout the show, that pretty much that, well, I want my own doctor, you know, or why do I have to use another doctor or whatever, whatever. Well, again, you know, the advantages uh, uh, are, uh, you know, having a physician who is uh, specifically hospital trained and hospital integrated on site 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and so you have uh, pretty much uh, uh, immediate when needed bedside care. Uh, and uh, it uh, is more uh, efficient, uh, and it uh, moves you through the hospital stay faster. Uh, our, our specific program is designed, you know, not to uh, have to see so many patients that you have to run in and out of the rooms, but actually have time to sit down with the patients and educate them and work with them through their process. And uh, it, it also provides efficiency of stay. You know, nobody wants to be in the hospital any longer than they have to. And you nobody know, wants to be there anyway. <laughs> right, that's true. And uh, you know, there there are things, there there are bugs and whatnot that uh, travel around the hospital. And so, you know, you don't want to be exposed to potential infections uh, or uh, um, uh, complications by being in the hospital too long. So it really looks at uh, efficiency and safety. Uh, you know, having the patient in the hospital, taking care of their acute problem, and moving them to the next level of care. Uh, uh, and uh, not prolong their stay. Um, and this is driven uh, not necessarily by the hospital system, but by uh, private insurers, the government. Um, uh, the, uh, they, they really have a, a very uh, tight degree of regulations, which are only getting tighter. And so you have to have a model that's very structured, uh, and uh, everybody has to sing off the same song sheet. <laughs> okay. What is the sniff test? A sniffist. Sniffist, okay. So um, uh, a sniffist, uh, sniff stands for a skilled nursing facility or, uh, or uh, extended care facility. Okay. There are uh, uh, physicians that are hospitalists in training that uh, specifically uh, focus on patient care post-discharge. And uh, so they are uh, uh, specialty trained in uh, nursing care medicine. And so they are called sniffists. Well, there's a lot of acronyms in healthcare. Uh, there certainly are. <laughs> Who came up with that one? <laughs> All right. So how about this? Um, we're ticking down. We got a couple minutes left. I, I would guess that a person in your position has a really good opportunity to see what is trending in the community with relation to illness. So when the flu builds up, I'm guessing you guys probably know first, maybe earlier than the primary care physician, based on what's coming in the hospital. Um, can you give us, our listeners, just a brief comment on the coronavirus and facts and what they, people can do just to protect themselves generally during this normal flu season that we're having in the U.S. right now? Sure, sure. Um, you know, your, your, your commentary is definitely correct. Uh, we see the trends uh, just based on our patient population because we, we take care of 150 patients or more a day on my service. And uh, so we're, we're seeing what's coming through. And so we'll see trends in different viral infections, uh, different bacterial infections, uh, as well as uh, 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 infections that set people up for secondary pneumonia. Uh, in, in general, the, uh, the influenza uh, virus has not been, had a big impact this year. Uh, we, we, we guesstimate on our service that we'll probably see that rise in March. Hmm. Uh, we're seeing mostly uh, um, um, uh, RSV, uh, respiratory syncytial virus, which is uh, a virus mostly seen in children, and then rhinovirus and enterovirus uh, and human metanumovirus, which sets people up then to secondary pneumonia, which is predominantly still uh, pneumococcal pneumonia. Um, uh, coronavirus uh, is not caused by drinking Mexican beer, by the way. <laughs> uh, and coronavirus is actually... Oh, that's how I remember uh, the name. That's myself <laughs> as well. Uh, coronavirus has been around for a while, and, and uh, we've had patients intermittently with coronavirus here. Uh, what's different is, is the... the uh, the virulence or nastiness of this strain that mutated uh, in China, and it's uh, obviously become epidemic and, and pandemic. Uh, the protection is basically uh, no different than uh, protecting yourself from uh, getting the flu. Uh, uh, good hand washing technique, uh, uh, prevention of uh, droplet uh, spread by uh, covering your mouth and nose when you cough, again, washing your hands. If you are ill, uh, not going to work, not going to school, staying home and, and, and staying isolated, 
Uh, and uh, uh, again, uh, having an influenza vaccine is still a very important thing, as well as a f uh, pneumonia vaccine, if, uh, if appropriate. Uh, we have uh, uh, not seen too much uh, of the coronavirus uh, yet, but it will come. Uh, I was speaking with one of my good friends who lives in California, and uh, the folks in California are definitely on, on edge uh, because of the amount of international travel and uh, international folks that uh, live in that part of the country. I know there was a recent question of uh, some folks from uh, students from Miami of Ohio. And so uh, uh, the CDC is uh, on top of things. Our infect infection control department has a protocol already set up. I'm, I'm definitely sure that Altman would have the same uh, protocol. So I think the potential for uh, any type of epidemic or uh, significant exposure in, in Canton, Ohio is going to be fairly small. But again, uh, you know, if, if uh, any, anybody who has flu-like symptoms should definitely uh, uh, see their primary care physician. Well, I think what you commented on makes a lot of sense. You know, there is a risk out there. There's a plan in place. People are becoming educated to be informed on how to make, take precautions to prevent the spread of any condition, whether it be flu or coronavirus. I spent some time on the CDC's website last night, and they've done a really nice job in laying out the facts and where things are now, and they have a nice narrative on what to do to prevent and contain if you get symptoms. Um, but I agree. Talk to your primary care physician um, and, and, you know, just practice general precautions. Right. Common sense. It matters. Any parting words for our guests? We've got about 30 seconds. Um, I just appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, be here today and uh, share information with uh, the community. Um, would like to make a shout out to my wife, Tina, <laughs> and my, uh, my, my son, Christopher, and his wife, and my daughter, Lauren, and uh, her husband, and my 15-month-old grandson, Jamison Thomas, who is wow. uh, really the love of our life. Any Wonderful. of your children in medical school or doctors? Um, or? They're all in health care. Uh, my, uh, my son is a gastroenterologist in Cleveland. Uh, my, my daughter-in-law is a radiation oncologist in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my daughter is a pediatric neurosurgical PA at Geisinger Healthcare in Pennsylvania, and her husband's a neurosurgical PA as well. Wow. wow. That's fantastic. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Dr. Michael Lins, our special guest today, Chief of Inpatient Mercy at Mercy Medical Center. Thanks to our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center and Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. Angelos. As always, we thank our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week, and we'll see you again right here next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X dot com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Mr. Bo Matthews, who is our operations manager.